and he's got this band with this really old dude on drums. Mm-hmm. And then there's a keyboard player who also... <laughs> mm-hmm. This is funny. Mm-hmm. The keyboard player who also plays guitar, who also plays clarinet. trombone, who yeah. also plays clarinet. <laughs> and sings. <laughs> yeah. That's such a cliche. Yeah. The keyboard player who does all these yeah, other yeah, instruments. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... Hi, Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he is also dressed like Boy George. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't know who Boy George is, Boy George famously dressed in drag and had a really big hit song, Do mm-hmm. You Really Want yeah. Me? And this song is played. But that was also weirdly inappropriate because it was a joke. Yeah, they made it's, fun of him. Yeah. In today's standards, it would have been considered wildly problematic. So yeah. there's so much that has changed. Oh my God, in yeah. 25 years, I guess. Yes. So this 25 yeah, year yeah. old movie. Yeah. Where this is coming out of the John Hughes. I, I read on uh, that this is trying to do the mold of John Hughes films. Mm-hmm. And John Hughes did 16 Candles, uh, Breakfast Club, these yeah. kinds of movies, Pretty in Pink. And so it was kind of in that inspiration and johnny hughes would famously make fun of people for things that would be not appropriate today mm-hmm. and so it seemed to pick up all of john hughes <laughs> inappropriate stuff into this movie oh, so there's not I just see. that there's yeah. also like that there was some fat shaming there was some yeah. Uh, there was all kinds of jokes. There was grabbing of... There was like, a lot of sexual harassment. There was a lot of sexual yeah. harassment. There was a lot of ass grabbing going on. Yeah, and a lot of sort of sexist remarks just casually thrown into everyday conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they were trying to make a point about the 80s. See, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. So that's what... To go back to what I was saying earlier, that this is a... 1998 movie about mm-hmm. 1985. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it was like trying to make like a commentary on that. Or if it was just the 90s. Or that was, was, yeah. That's exactly what my question was. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know because it's not clear. Yeah. If it was trying to... Because there's a lot of 80s jokes. But I think that aspect, the the, the sexism yeah. and the inappropriate, like the fat shaming and all that, uh-huh. I think that was a 90s thing. I think that was like dominant in pop culture. Because, what was um, dominant? Fat shaming and sexism. All of the movies that came out in the late 90s that were kind of in that genre. What was was the Gwyneth Paltrow one? Shallow Hell. Hell. That was 1999-ish, I think. And then American Pie had the same undertone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of these movies had the exact same undertone as this movie. And um, And if anything, The Wedding Singer is probably the most innocent out of... That yeah, batch. there's some awkward moments like yeah. when Drew Barrymore gets her ass grabbed and Adam Sandler says, just go with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but by a kid, right? A and kid. then what's weirder is that Adam Sandler dances with a girl, like a, a young girl, and then he like puts her hands on his ass. Yeah, so that's not so right either. That's not right, but like... <laughs> Back then, I didn't think anything of it because he was just trying to make a Nobody joke. Nobody did. Out of, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So, and I was also wondering as I was watching this, and this isn't, you know, I'm not saying we should go back to doing these things. No. At all. But I was also wondering if somehow we're going to stop being so uptight about a lot of things. And then this is going to be sort of like a phase, a cultural mm-hmm, phase. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like a we're in the process of weeding out what's truly inappropriate Mm -hmm. and wrong yeah and we're in this there's an overreach yeah there's an overreach and we're in this like sort of um awkward phase Mm -hmm. of transitioning into a more appropriate Mm -hmm. way to talk about things right but all of that was wildly inappropriate Mm -hmm. it was really weird to see that because this happened in my lifetime yeah right it's not like i (laughs) didn't know these things i watched this movie back in 1998 Mm -hmm. So it was weird to see how I feel now yeah. as opposed to what I felt like back then. Right. It's just remarkable mm. how much how much has changed. I, I have to give a nod to the cinematographer, and I don't mm. know who it is, but I know it's a comedy, and it was lit brightly like a comedy, mm. but it was really well lit. Like, it mm. was... Like, the facial tones were all really nice. I think you commented on nice, that. Yeah. And then there was just really nice backlighting, and uh, everybody looked fantastic, 
the production design was so garish mm-hmm. with all of the colors, but not incorrect. Was it really like that in the 80s? Yeah. Because it looked like Barbie's dream house on acid. Yeah, it, like, yeah. it was crazy. It, yeah. It looked comical, wasn't it? But right. but I don't think it was really that comical. Like, mm. I would sum up the 1980s in a shirt. <laughs> yeah. And it was the guy, his best friend with the mustache, who gets out of the car after mm-hmm. listening to uh, Pass the Toshi Pane Left Hand Side. And he gets out of the car and he's got this shirt on. Yeah. And that shirt is to me the 80s. Yeah, it was a, how would you describe this shirt? It's this purple mm-hmm. shirt pattern that doesn't, the, the left side doesn't go with the right side. Right. And it's just garish. Yeah. And I think he's got some stonewashed jeans going on or something like that. Stonewashed jeans for sure, yeah. But that, like, that pattern, that kind of pastel pattern, mm-hmm. bright pastel pattern look, mm-hmm. hard colors, mm-hmm. was on art. Mm-hmm. It was in album covers. Mm-hmm. It was in so much of the style of the 1980s. And he just wore it on, right. on his shirt. So The production of music during that time was very garish and the colorful. The 80s were really weird. They were really weird. Everybody I think it's was a on singular, I think it's a singular decade that just really stands out, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking about, when you were talking about that shirt, it occurred to me that that was probably the first decade of fast fashion. Okay. Like the Gap, Levi's, mm-hmm. like, you know, that kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. just mass production internationally Mm -hmm. um just sort of outsourced um you know to china Mm -hmm. you know making you know whatever and clothes became so cheap everything became really cheap that's my understanding of the 80s Mm -hmm. when the globalization started happening yes and then everything was cheaper the economy was booming in certain areas like america and japan there was some imitation of Japan. Right. I, I'm going to shamefully admit something. Mm-hmm. So around 1984, mm-hmm. I was in middle school. Mm-hmm. This is so embarrassing. That was fine. You were in middle school. Yeah, I was in middle school. But we had, I had like, um, like flash dance was big at the time. Of course. Yeah. And I had one of these shirts mm-hmm. that was like a, like a, like a gray tank, you know, with like wide. Mm-hmm sleeve holes yeah. and it had like a japanese some japanese writing on it yeah that i would wear over another shirt i don't think there's anything embarrassing about that considering that oh, this was y- 1984 yeah because everybody looked crazy yeah so everybody then, did yeah. look really really weird it's yeah. so garish and the hair <laughs> yeah the hair i also had the feathered hair yeah. i had the wallet with the chain have you seen the chain of wallets? course yeah so they would chain the wallet would chain to you and it was like the thing It was like Doc Martens today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was also like everything. There was heavy influence from Japan, pop Mm -hmm. culture from Japan during this time. There was, yeah, the strange fascination with Asia and Hong Kong. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of coke, Mm -hmm. but in a very plastic way. Yeah. In a very artificial way. Mm -hmm. And everybody was chasing money. Yeah. Um, And there was a lot of money. And it was Reagan. And there was a lot of money. And the economy was, was kind of in a weird spot. But yeah, it was... Really strange time. Yeah. And then the bubble just burst. It was just like, you know, none of that could last forever. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, the music kind of pushed itself into, like, hair metal towards Mm -hmm. the end of the decade. And then all of a sudden, Jane's Addiction, Smashing Mm -hmm. Pumpkins, and Nirvana happened. Oh, you know who I love? Mr. Big. Oh, yeah. Mr. Big was a a good band. Were they considered a hair metal, um, a hair band? They were a hair metal band with very... But the thing is, with the (laughs) hair metal bands, Uh they were all talented. Yeah. It's so... This is what the 80s did. And it did did strange things to musicians. There was a lot of hair metal bands that were so plastic in appearance, Mm. terrible songs, Mm. phenomenal singers, phenomenal musicians. It's so soothing to hear, to watch that music video of Mr. Big's um, To be with you, yeah. all I want to yeah. And um, the, the lead singer, his hair is like all like, and he keeps yeah. on doing that. And he's like, to be with you, and yeah. oh, little girl. And I was like, oh, thank yeah. you. And you know, it's just so soothing. It's the most soothing thing. Yeah. And then you kind of like think it, it kind of evokes these memories, these vague memories I have about the 80s where everything was cushy. And, you know, like I was a 
kid and you know sitcoms were a thing mm-hmm. and you know christmas and everybody had yeah, like a lot of money christmas movies <laughs> yeah. everybody um, had a lot of money and a nice and a house. car and a yeah. nice house yeah. and uh, we didn't but you know everybody right. there was this the dream of mm-hmm. somewhere you know somehow getting and then also like our country had our first hosted our first olympic games yeah, right. and so korea. it was a big year for a big decade mm-hmm. for korea and there was a lot of hope in the air i think yeah and I think um, some like deep in my psyche, I kind of when I listen to music from back then, it evokes those feelings of hope and mm. warmth. Yeah. And this movie did like did that for me like in a weird way, mm-hmm. even though it was a '90s movie. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe kids like me who were born in the '80s had that Mm -hmm. and had this weird 80s nostalgia i think maybe a lot of people had 80s nostalgia Mm -hmm. back in the late 90s Mm -hmm. maybe that's why this movie was so popular yeah Mm. 